Hello and welcome to Real Quick episode 92. Today we have another Patreon movie review. Thank you to our great patron Cody Whitney who recommended us Brother Bear today. Before we get into the review, just want to thank you all for the recent support. Um, getting us a lot of subscribers, a lot of followers and a lot more ratings on Spotify. We really appreciate it recently. And as you will have noticed, we've tried to change the layout, upgraded a few things. Let us know what you think works. Let us know what we, think we can change. We always appreciate your input, hence why we asked on the logos, on Twitter and stuff like that, or X, should I say now. Um, we really appreciate all the input in the minute, but we're going to get into a Brother Bear review today. So I believe this was the first watch well, was the first watch for me. Cam, I know you've seen it before. Yeah, this George was like Tyler. a big one for my childhood too. I'm shocked it's the first watch. Mm -hmm. George and Tyler, you've seen it before? Never seen it before now. Yes, but a really, really, really long time ago. Yeah. Bas fair. This was basically a first watch. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so this is a 2003 Disney animation. Um, I'll go over the synopsis as always. When an impulsive boy named Kanai is magically transformed into a bear, he must literally walk in another's footsteps until he learns some valuable life lessons. His courageous and often zany journey introduces him to a forest full of wildlife, including a lovable bear cub, Coda. Hilarious moose, Matt... Uh, Rut, should I say, and took woolly mammoth and rambunctious rams. Um, so first watch for me, as always, we'll go over a little bit of our kind of spoiler-free thoughts, I guess. I think most of probably... It's it's a very simple film. Most people would guess what we're going to say at a certain point. But I think we're obviously being first watches for a couple of us. I'll go over those first. Tyler, obviously your first watch guaranteed, same as me. What were your thoughts on the film? Yeah, it just felt like such a classic throwback so what is 2003 just felt like a it felt nostalgic this movie even though i'd never seen it before but just the the animation style felt very like what i was used to growing up watching which i loved so many like so many more songs like so many songs this movie where it's just like it's just like perfect like throwback disney movie where it's just cool 2d animation throwing a bunch of musical numbers and it's just like a good vibe and obviously like as adults we're able to pick up on like more of the deeper themes and stuff but to its core like this movie is just like a pretty it, it tells a story we've seen like many times before, you know, it's like the thing that you kind of fear the most ends up becoming something you start to understand from a different perspective and realize that, you know, they're not something scary. They're just different than you. And you kind of get to understand different people and cultures. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess there are some like spoilers in this. So I, I'll just keep it high level for now. It was my first watch. I thought the musical numbers were fun. I thought the animation like was very lively. I love the nature scenes and the nature setting. Um, Joaquin Phoenix was it was a funny role for him to be in. Um, it's one of those that like you don't really notice until you notice. And once you notice, you can't stop noticing. Um, but yeah, it, it was fine. Like I didn't love it. Definitely didn't hate it by any means. It was just kind of just like a very middle of the road. It's one of those things that like, and I think this is a Disney Plus thing. Um, where like I, I turned around, I was like, oh, an hour and a half. That's like a standard like you know animated child's movie. But then like. Disney Plus, for some reason, always has the longest, like, credits after him. So, like, the movie, like, it was, like, a, an hour and 14 in, like, the movie ended. It's like, oh, shit. Okay, so we're, like, really short in this movie. But, yeah, it, it was just middle of the road for me. Yeah, that's fine. It's kind of similar to me. But, George, I'll let you go over your thoughts first. Yeah, I mean, Tyler kind of, you know, expressed my thoughts to a T. Um, this is just, like, there isn't most... really much you can Yeah, about, it's, it's, it's like, I, I hate calling, like... I hate calling animated films children films, but like this was very much geared towards children. Like yeah. it's dealing with like deeper themes, like Tyler said, of like hating something, fearing something, and then understanding it through weird means. Um, but it's just told in like a very like child friendly way. Um, and like Tyler said, and and I echo the same sentiment. I haven't seen this movie in forever, but it still feels like very nostalgic. It's just like the most early two thousands Disney movie you could imagine. Um, and I literally, again, like Tyler said, like everything from the animation style to the random musical numbers to, you know, the very shallow telling of, you know, a, a maybe deeper themed story. Um, it's very early 2000s Disney. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm pretty much right there with Tyler. Middle of the pack. I'm still deciding between a three and a three and a half. I'll probably land on a three and a half, you know, be, be nice to the movie because I did have a good time with it. Um and yeah, the Joaquin Phoenix thing didn't notice it until Cam. I'm surprised by that. I yeah, I really just at I, I absolutely did not even realize it was Joaquin Phoenix until Cam texted us, and then I just could not stop hearing Joaquin Phoenix for the rest of the movie. Um, but no, really good movie. Um, I kind of wish they expl I wish it was like 20 minutes longer 
to have explored the relationship between Kanai and Coda a little bit more just to make like the final 20 minutes feel like more emotional and more rewarding. Um, but either way, I really like the relationship between those two. I, 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 you know, like this movie, you know, throughout had a good time with it. Um, just standard Disney early two thousands animation. Yeah. I'm like, it's, it's an interesting one because I think it, it works, but it's also very standard in, in the, I think Tyler mentioned, we've seen this before, you know, the whole, like being another person's shoes kind of the where you understand them. And obviously as Tyler mentioned, um, the biggest threat is also, uh, what was the quote you said, Tyler? I can't remember about the, uh, uh, the biggest enemy. Just like, anime. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, yeah, you're, you, something that you kind of view as a threat is really something that's not threatening. It's just something that's different. You don't understand it. Yeah. I mean like being another person's shoes or another mammal's shoes in this sense, sense and being understanding experience and understanding emotion. And I think it works on a level where it is simplistic. Like George said, it's clearly catered towards children and helping people understand how to, you know, treat others in a way. Um, and also with wildlife, I think the musical notes, I didn't expect it like as many, I guess I, I, a good chunk of this movie is just yeah. pure. Some, some it's Bill Collins. It's Bill some Collins. Some to me, and some doesn't. I think it's like it's loud. It's ambitious. I think that I really like the animation style. Actually, I am quite keen on the kind of early two thousands Disney animated style. I think it looks really good, and I think the characters, you know, they are okay. They're fine. I think, like George said, I would have liked it to been explored a little bit more within the back end with the relationship with the two. Um, I think the voice actor was fine. I think. I did notice Joaquin Phoenix. Because I'm not saying you know add anything crazy to the role. I think it was just a simple project um, that works in essence because it is charming, because it's well animated, and because some of the musical numbers are really they, they are cool, they are um, enjoyable. But I also felt like a lot of it was kind of nonsensical, and it never really like went anymore. It was like a hangover film at times, I guess, which is fine if you enjoy that. Um, but yeah, for me, very much just. Middle of, well, not middle of the road, because that would imply that I'd give like a 2.5 and probably the same as George. Tyler, did you say what you're going to give it or what you're thinking? Yeah, I didn't. I did not. I gave it a 4.9 for 2.5 stars. Also, oh, yeah. we hit our letterbox reviews this week with the first time ever for the real quick. So let us know if you want us to keep doing that because we revealed them all in this episode and you didn't know that I gave it a 2.5 until just now. Yeah. Dun, um, dun, so dun. I, I'm probably the same as George. I think like a three. You know, I, I'm not going to say I had a bad time with it. I had an okay time with it because of the positives that I mentioned. I just don't think it really does anything. But again, if there's going to be animation catered towards children, which obviously a lot, especially in that period of Disney, I think this is one of those films. So it's not really something, you know, I grew up with or anything. I can imagine like having a lot more fun memories of this if I grew up with it throughout the time. Um, but Cam, I know you've seen it before. I know you said that you watched it as like a kid quite a few times. If you want to let us know your thoughts. Yeah, I liked it a lot as a kid. I've seen it a couple of times as an adult with my niece and just on my own. Um, don't care for it a ton. Uh, I think George texted and said he really liked it. And then I said it's mid. Hi, bud. Um, uh, I gave it a 56 out of 100, for, and I'll just keep it there. That's what I had my rating at before this watch. That's what I'll just keep it at. Um, three out of five, just barely scraping that three. Um, it's fine. I think Phil Collins' score misses compared to Tarzan. Like I think Phil Collins' score in Tarzan is the best Disney's ever done with the score. Um, I think this is an unfortunate miss from him. Not not horrible, just not not all there. Um, the story, I don't I don't feel the connection as much per se. I don't think it I don't think it's um, written all that well to make uh, the connection feel as strong there. And you know it is a kids movie, so most all kids movies aren't like perfect by any means in the in terms of that. But I do think there are a ton that have like fantastic writing to where you really feel the emotion behind it. And this one I just wasn't all there for. Um, yeah, that's what uh, I said. Yeah. Like, I wish the movie was just like 20 minutes longer. Just to yeah. like, not even to like flesh the characters out, but just to give us more time with their relationships. Because like the whole like, as spoilers if we want to toss that little banner on. But like the whole scene where Kanai is finally telling Koda like what happened to his mom and how Kanai was there. Like that should have hit like a little bit more emotionally, but it just didn't because we just didn't have that much time with the two characters beforehand. Um, and with that said, I did like their relationship. I did like this like adopted brother relationship. Um, but yeah, the movie needed to be like 15 or 20 minutes longer to have just given us a little bit more time with these relationships so that when those endings hit, it just felt a little more rewarding. 
I can see why Joaquin Phoenix was pulled to this movie because I feel like it's literally like a mushroom trip. Like that's literally what the movie is. Like a guy goes to basically a shaman who's like, you need to change your perspective on life here. I'm going to turn you into a bear. Basically like basically that chick probably just gave him just like a shit ton of mushrooms and he just started <laughs> tripping. He's like, holy shit. The bears are just other nature. We're all just one people. We're not enemies. We're actually friends. And then at the end, you're like, "Oh shit, I'm not a bear anymore." Whoo, that was that was wild. <laughs> and I just Joaquin Phoenix probably read the script. He's like, "Yeah, I've had this exact vision actually multiple times <laughs> in my life. This would be perfect for me." Um, but yeah, it's it's a fun fun little kids movie. But I I, I I don't know. It just didn't stick. It's one that I probably think would probably be an annoying movie if I watched as a kid. Like where my parents would probably get annoyed with it because I probably would have loved these musical numbers as a kid and probably would have just like always been like, "Tell everybody I'm on my way." Like, that's, my on Marshall right, that's on yeah, Banks. Yeah, that's on Banks. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say it doesn't, but the rest of the music isn't as good. I don't. That that's a song that. It might have only been in the movie once, but I feel like it was in the movie seven times. <laughs> and I feel like yeah, I heard that musical number like eight times, <laughs> even though it probably might have only been once. But it well, just no, feel well, like he, he just like st- Coda started just randomly singing it here out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kadai's like, let's not talk, and Coda's like, okay, I'll sing. <laughs> I'll sing. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, shut the fuck up. Oh, God. Um, <clears throat> it's an interesting oh. one. I think it's like, <clears throat> did you go into spoilers? You did, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. It's an interesting one. I think that I I get why people because I'm looking at like other other ratings. I actually have quite a few people who rated it quite highly. I think it, this is one of those. If I'd have grown up with it, I would have loved those musical numbers. But they just I actually found them quite annoying at times. Do you know what I mean? Like I kind of wanted the story to progress. I wanted to like George said, see more of the relationship and see it build and really understand why he was in that shoes, why he was in that position, and also you know what he'd learned from it more than what we got. But at the same time, I think I have to understand I'm looking at this from a perspective of me now and not me when I was nine years old. Do you know what I mean? You know, if I'm nine, I'm not going to be caring about that shit. I think it has a few, you know, good musical numbers. It, it, it's well animated. I really like the animated style, especially that for that period. And I think it tells a good and simple message similar to like a lot of the Pixar films, you know, we see, like especially the ones that don't need to put you in a complete existential crisis, like an elemental for this year, for example. Just have a simple message coolly animated some cool characters some funny moments it'll do well um with the younger people but for me yeah it was fine i think i'm gonna rate this a a three i think so like you know just above average that kind of rating um is there anything we nearly we want to cover at all with this not really i feel like we touched on everything <laughs> there's not really much you can cover in a yeah. disney in a 2003 Hour animated 25 hour, minutes not even hour like 10 <laughs> minutes film so they're, they're, the they're turning this into a live action remake i do not oh that. really are they really oh shit. yeah um is joaquin phoenix reprising his role <laughs> no so that's the thing like i'm <laughs> trying to true. see maybe maybe <laughs> i'm seeing like for brother bear too because obviously can i was joaquin phoenix yeah, because because there was a brother bear too okay that's where patrick dempsey became can i instead of joaquin phoenix they couldn't I don't know what happened. What what movie came out between 2003 and 2006 with Joaquin Phoenix? Was that Signs? Signs, probably. What elevated his, his status the, so the much village. that he couldn't come back for Brother Bear 2? Yeah, maybe it was The Village. Uh, I don't think that's a movie that would put him above Brother Bear 2. St- signs, Bear. signs. Oh, walk, walk signs. the line. Walk the line. Mm, that was like 2006, I, I, I feel like. No, but you have to bear in mind, though. Oh, no, Signs 2002. I thought Signs 2004. It wasn't even Signs. Yeah, so no to be fair, though, M. Night was... When was The Village? Like, 2006? M. Night was popping, like, Six Sands, yeah. Signs. Like, he was huge then. So I feel like something like that. It is a weird role for him to take, though, because when I watched it, I, I did recognize his voice, but I had no idea going into it because I just, like, you don't know, really expect... Is this his first ever acti- uh, voice acting role? Gotta be. Gotta be. I've, um, I can't think of anything because he's not even done that many films to begin with, yeah. really. Let's be honest. I guess I haven't seen. I, I guess okay. I guess a live action remake's not confirmed, but there's just a ton of articles saying like Disney has been vocal about them wanting to make one. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, obviously they can make the live action like the Lion King when they're like the bears, but I would be interested to see how they would handle like the human part in a live action remake. I feel like that I, could get dicey. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think you just stay clear of that. To be honest with you, like, I don't. I don't think it's needed. Um, yeah. But yeah, so obviously Cam did Cam give it a three? I missed his last part. Uh, he gave it a fifty six, so that would oh, be a three, three for him. Yeah. Three. Yeah, yeah. So Cam give it a three. I think I'm gonna give it a three as well. I might add my rating now, actually. No. Why would I add it now? That's great. <laughs> yeah, you gotta I'm add it on Friday. On Friday. Yeah. Friday. <laughs> this <is a> live show. <laughs> uh Cam give it a three. George a three slash three point five. Yeah. Uh Tyler a two point five and me a three as well. 
Cam, is there anything you want to touch on? We just went over everything for you. I probably missed everything. Don't worry about it. 56 out of 100. Don't rope, me, don't rope me into the five star. So Cam gave it a three. Um, going going forward, and it was it was fine. Thanks for your recommendation, Cody Whitney, of course. And as I mentioned earlier, let us know what you think of the new layouts. We we really like them, and we always want more inputs on everything. And thank you for I, checking out the Patreon, checking out Spotify. I do appreciate the the quick watch. Do appreciate that from the patrons. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. But we should mention as well, though, for the patrons listening, you don't always have to recommend things that we haven't all seen. You know, mm-hmm. we we can do some stuff. You know, if you recommended like. I think Cam said like prisoners, for example, anything like that. Classics, yeah, any classics. Yeah, yeah. even if, if it's just a film, like, I don't know, Pulp Fiction, just an example, thing we've all seen. We can. St- mm-hmm. I'm happy to watch it again and go over it and go a bit more in detail because I think we could really touch on some points when it comes to these classics, longer films, and stuff we mm-hmm. can really go in depth on different periods. But anyway, we appreciate it. We all enjoyed the film in a way. It was, it was, it was fine. Um, but we appreciate you listening to Real Quick, episode 92. And we will speak to you later.